Have you found yourself playing Baldur's Gate 3 and thought, this sure is nice, but it'd be a lot better if I could play as an edgelord, servant of Slanesh, as well as one of the most powerful magic mortal users in the world, with only a smidge of a thing for her son? Well, look no further, because today we're making a build for Marathi. Last video, I asked you to leave suggestions in the comments, and I saw a couple of people asking for this, so let's get into it. For looks, we're of course using Total War as reference, and oh my, what a reference it is. Nice shot! Firstly, Marathi is of course a Dark Elf, and the equivalent of that in Baldur's Gate is the Drow. Now, it's not a one-to-one -one either looks or lore-wise, as Drow in Baldur's Gate are underground dwelling spider worshippers, but visually they're a close enough match, and personality-wise, it's pretty close too. Both Drow and Dark Elves are known for their ruthlessness and goals above everything approach to life. With this race, Marathi will start out with the Dancing Lights cantrip, allowing her to see in the dark with a magical assist. As well as this, she'll have a fairly standard movement range in battle, proficiencies with a bunch of weapons she'll never use, superior dark vision to see in the dark even without a light source, and an advantage when defending against charms and sleeps. We're going to stick with the Loth Sworn Drow rather than the Seldarin. While Dark Elves and Warhammer don't necessarily worship a spider goddess, they're definitely on the evil side of things rather than seeking allies and settling conflict. As for looks, Momrathi, uh, I mean Marathi, is extremely pale with massive hair and very little clothing. We'll come back to the clothing later, but for her looks, I tried to make her as glamorous as possible while still being close to her Total War depiction. There is no hair option big enough, so I chose the closest I could find that suited the rest of her look, and I think I didn't do too bad a job. Would. And me trying to make her pretty isn't just me being damn bad for video game characters. As well as that, it's also actually part of her lore. She uses ancient magic to amplify and preserve her beauty, and all who look upon her are quickly overcome with a hypnosis-like lust to serve her in the hope that she might one day repay their kindness. Moving on to her class, and I'm going with Sorcerer and sticking with that for the whole game. While an argument could be made for Wizards, since she for sure does her studying, why else would she be hunched over a desk all the time, her close relationship with Slanesh and the various gifts given to her make her a better fit for Sorcerer. She works hard at her craft, yes, but she's certainly not nigh. This will come to play shortly, but Sorcerers also have high charisma and use it for their casting, which again is a perfect fit for Marathi, who has no problems getting people on side to do her bidding. For Sorcery, we get to pick four starting cantrips, and I'm going with Bone Chill, Ray of Frost, Blade Ward, and Acid Splash. I'll cover this in more detail later, but in Total War, her magic is quite mixed, but it's primarily focused on dark spells to damage foes and sap them of strength and resolve. Since Baldur's Gate doesn't have a direct set of spells similar to this, I'm going to be taking some creative liberties and going for an aggressive damage and debuffs build that fits her cold, chaotic demeanor. These four cantrips are a great display of that, with damage and debuffs aplenty. Yes, Blade Ward might not make as much sense, but she needs some defense, and the other choices aren't a much better fit, so we'll make do. For our two starting spells, I went with Ice Knife and Magic Missile. Again, we got that cold and dark damage to keep up the aggression. For our Sorcerer subclass, I chose to stick with Wild Magic, more or less because of the description. Your powers come from ancient forces of chaos is quite literally how Marathi has a lot of her powers, so it's a no-brainer. With this, we also get a couple of features. Tides of Chaos will let us gain advantage on various roles, and Wild Magic will unlock us some powerful effects later on in some powerful and unpredictable ways. For the background, while you could make an argument for Noble or Sage, I really think Acolyte is the best fit, at least until War. It's not technically canon to actual Warhammer, but in-game Marathi leads the Cult of Pleasure, aka a Cult of Slanesh, so this description fits that role perfectly. With this, we'll get insights and religion for bonuses to each of these roles to help us scope out situations and know what we're getting into before settling into Sunday service. Lastly, for our ability points, we're going with the following. 8 Strength, because she's not a frontlines battler at all, so shouldn't really need any. 12 Dex and Constitution, since again, she should be out of combat, so not have to do too much dodging or tanking. 14 Intelligence, since she is pretty well read and does work hard at her craft, both spell and state, so we'll be relatively up to date on the goings on of most things. 12 Wisdom, so not as high as Intelligence, but again, she'll have a decent understanding of most things and be able to perceive a lot of what's going on in a lot of different situations. And 17 Charisma, as I said, this is the primary start of Sorcerers, so this will mean a better chance to land spells and any effects placed on enemies will be a lot harder for them to shake off. As well as this, most interactions with others she'll get a decent advantage such as Persuasion and Deception, which are both essential tools when you want to dismantle and take over the world. Lastly, we have Skills, and I'm going Arcana and Deception. Arcana is of course arcane knowledge, so of course she should be fairly skilled in in figuring out magical situations, and of course deception is her chosen diplomatic tool to get us to do her bidding without giving away her full intentions. Now we finally have our starting Marathi, we can get into how to gear her up and play her in game. Over in Total War, Marathi is pretty much a pure spellcaster. She lacks much melee damage, she has no ranged, and is far from tough as her armor might suggest. This means you want to use her as a support character from the back lines to drop spells onto enemies to assist your allies. She does wield a staff and a sword, but really wants to avoid using them if at all possible. Translating that to Baldur's Gate is actually fairly straightforward. First up, armor. I'm of course using mods to get everything in game to find the best look, so of course just get items of a similar class rather than trying to hunt down the same drip right out the gate. So for armor, short version, 
not wearing any. If we were actually following Total War, we'd be wearing basically just the underwear, but in the interest of not getting this video age restricted and being able to use some cool stuff in game, let's get dressed up real nice. So we'll be sticking to clothing rather than any class of armor. Not only does this fit with the low armor, but clothing also often has a lot of effects to enhance spell casting and sometimes even toughness, even without wearing any armor. So go for clothing items and hunt down those which grant her more powers, be that in the form of spells, buffs or whole new abilities. The more corrupt the better. No magical artifact is too corrupt and no price is too high as long as she gets more power in the end. And of course, try to keep her looking glamorous. No point in having these blessings of Slanesh if you're not going to show them off. As for weaponry, since we can't dual wield a sword and a staff, I'm going to stick with the staff. Since we want to avoid melee wherever possible, staffs are the superior pick since they more often than not have magical buffs similar to clothing, so either stat bonuses or whole new spells and abilities. Ideally, you'll never even use your weapon in combat, so prioritize magical effects over damage every time. For ranged, as I said, she has nothing in Total War, but for convenience sake, I'd take something and honestly, go for whatever you want. Dark Elves are known for their crossbows, but if you find a nice bow or even a dart, go right ahead. It all makes as much sense as each other, which is to say, not very much. Lastly, make sure you dye everything this reddish purple and you are off to the races. All this adds up to a loadout with very little defense, but a whole lot of offense. Casters are glass cannons and she's no different, so keep her at the back, out of reach from enemy damage and rain death and destruction onto the battlefield on a massive scale. Of course, items can give you defensive bonuses, but prioritize damage over everything. Outside of gear and onto her role playing style, Marathic lies more towards the lawful side of evil. Don't get me wrong, she quite literally does love her some chaos, but her main goal is to install her son Malekith as Witch King and keep him there, which is a pretty lawful objective to have. Am I saying she obeys every law? No. Her chaotic affiliation is literally against the Dark Elf rules, but she's still lawful in her approach. How does this translate into gameplay in Baldur's Gate? Well, we're obviously going to go down the evil path for most actions we come across. This means you're not shying away from harming or even killing people to get what you want, especially if it is the easiest solution. Lies and deception are on the table no matter who you are talking to, you are looking out for yourself above everything and seek to acquire as much power as possible to further your own agenda. For companions, you're going to lean towards the darker choices, so Astarian is a must, as well as the Shah worshipping Shadowheart, both of which you'll want to push into their dark sides as much as possible. For the final choice, you can perform a certain action in Act 1 and collect a third and particularly dark companion there. Basically, make friends with the most evil folk you can find and corrupt each other in every way you know how. Speaking of which, romance. I mean, she leads the cult of pleasure in Total War and is an avid Slanesh follower, so anyone your heart or other organs desire, Go right ahead, monogamy be damned. Lastly, if your quest is to gain as much power as possible, then yes, the accursed gummy worms are a must. A little bit gross, yes, but nothing is too far when it comes to increasing your abilities. Speaking of improved abilities, let's go over just how to level this Mother of Darkness. As I said, we're sticking to Sorcerer for all 12 levels. No other class really fits a lot on playstyle, so we're going to stick with just the one. So, level 2, we actually get quite a lot, especially compared to the last two fighter builds. We get our first foray into Sorcerer points. These are generated every time we spend a spell slot and can be used on a number of abilities to further enhance our magic, which we'll come back to shortly. We can also use them to replenish spell slots, which is especially useful early on when they are extremely limited. We pick up another spell at this level, and I'm going with Ray of Sickness. As I said, Marathit is all about damage and debuffs to enemies, so while this may not fit her dark magic, it does actually fit her actual playstyle, so that's what I'm going with. We also get two class passives, and these are the other way to use our sorcery points. To start off with, I'm going with Distance and Extended Spell. Distant will let us extend the range of spells by 50%, letting us stay as far to the back as possible while still providing support in combat. Extended will double the duration of pretty much everything we can create using magic, so stats, effects on terrain and enemies, as well as any summons. Both of these cost points to use, so they're not going to be turned on all the time, but when they are, they can make the difference you need in combat. At level 3, we pick up our first tier 2 spell, and I'm going with Crown of Madness. For the class passives this time, I'm going with Quicken Spell, which will let us use a normal spell as a bonus action, rather than a full action, essentially allowing more cast per turn. We also get our first racial spell, and it's a fairy fire, giving our team advantage on all enemies caught in an area. At level 4, we can pick up another cantrip, and I went with Poison Spray for more damage and debuffs. For the spell, I'm going with Phantasmal Force for some extra damage. As for our first feat, I'm picking up Spell Sniper. This will let us pick up the Eldritch Blast cantrip for extra damage for no spell slots, as well as increasing our chance to land critical spells. Both will be useful early on, all the way into the late game. At level 5, we get another racial spell, and it's Darkness, allowing us to blind enemies in an area, which is great, especially for no spell slots. We also get our first tier 3 spell, and I'm I'm going for Faith, some more debuffs and CC, should she find herself in the danger zone. At level 6, we unlock the Bend Luck class action, which allows us to spend sorcery points to skew the odds of various rolls into our favour. We also pick up another spell, and I went with Hypnotic Pattern. More CC, plus it fits her hypnotising beauty gimmick perfectly, because who would want to attack such a lovely lady? At level 7, it's our first tier 4 spell, and Ice Storm is my pick. Area damage that covers the area in ice, making it hard for all to move through. Sounds perfect for me, especially given where Marathi normally lives. It does beg the question, how does she actually stay warm? 
but I don't think I want to know. A level eight is another spell. This time I'm going with Blight for some more damage. We can also grab another feat, and this time it's Warcaster. Let's us deal more magical damage as reactions, and we'll have an easier time maintaining concentration on any active spell effects. At level nine, we get our first tier five spell, and Insect Plague is my pick. More big area damage and the debuffs on those stuck in the radius can save your team's bacon, or at least buy them some time. At level 10, we can get another cantrip, and I'm going with Fireball for more damage. Again, not really anything she can do in Total War, but neither are any of the other options, so we might as well have all the damage we can. Plus, it's a great utility spell for any oils and more. For our spell, I'm going to go with Dominate Person, cause you know. Wood. For another passive, I'm taking Subtle Spell. Silences aren't super common, but keeping her useful even if she gets stuck in one can come in useful in those situations when you rarely need her. Level 11, we now have a chance to cause foes to suffer a wild magic surge when casting spells nearby. This means they can be hit by one of many magical effects, none of them good. We can also get our first tier 6 spell, and I'm going with Circle of Death for massive damage in an area around a target. Finally, at level 12, we get one more spell, and I'm going to grab Cone of Cold for one last bit of chilling damage. For our final feat, I'm taking Performer to get a buff to Charisma, and I'm sure Marathi put on some performances for Anarian back in the day, so why not? In her final form, she'll be a devastating spellcaster with a ton of damage and a little bit of utility to place as many disadvantages on enemies as possible. She won't be into helping her team or tanking damage, so keep her at the back using extended range when necessary to keep the damage coming while she stays safely out of sight. You want to stock up on sorcery points and remember to use them to enhance your magic. It is easy to forget to use these or try to save them for some huge battle that's not coming, so anytime you place an effect or need more range, look to the points to keep her useful at all times. Of course, she will be a glass cannon, so make sure you bring plenty of potions, both for healing but also resistance. Remember, she seeks power no matter the source, so if you have to use and abuse potions to give yourself an edge, then don't be afraid to get chugging. And of course, keep allies nearby to tank all the damage and heal their leader. Whether they stay alive is of no concern, as long as Marathi gets her power, that's all that matters. And that is my Marathi build for Baldur's Gate 3. Let me know if you'd make any changes in the comments below. Also be sure to let me know what builds you'd like to see next. Remember, it doesn't have to be Warhammer, so anything you think would make a good build, let me know in the comments. Like, subscribe, and if you want to see more Baldur's Gate 3 content, then check out this video to see my Carl Franz build.